how to care about your financial health. The next big thing I think that is going to happen in the next couple of years is do-it-yourself indexing. Do-it-yourself indexing for me is you do your own index. You don't buy one from someone else. How do I come to this idea? Well, when I started to save for my retirement, I started to buy exchange-traded funds, index funds, because I was told it's the cheapest way to, to invest in a market and I can save all the expensive fees from uh, asset managers and advisors. Well, during the time that I've been an index investor, I've read a lot and I've learned that there are serious flaws with index investments. And I want to show them quickly to you. The first one is index indexes, how they typically work is you take the companies of a certain country, what you see here is the Swiss market index, and you put all these companies into one basket of companies. And what happens if you do that based on the price of this company is that you end up with the most expensive companies comprising the bigger part of your index. So if you save for retirement for a long time and you do it with index investment, you may save fees, but you end up always purchasing the expensive companies in the market. Five years ago, it was not Nestle and Novartis, which are really defensive titles, and that's why they're that expensive right now. It was the banks and insurance companies. And you know, this is not a good idea. But even worse, when you buy an index, you buy a lot of things you don't really need, because recent, uh, uh, <laughs> actually, one more thing I wanted to tell you here is, it's not only in Switzerland where you have this bias, and you may think that in the States, where the market is much bigger, uh, you have a much more diversified index, but it's actually the case that Apple right now is responsible for 39% of revenue of profit growth in the entire Standard Poor's 500 index. That was last year. As a matter of fact, the Standard Poor's 500 index, which is the largest index of the largest financial market in the world, um, has uh, grown in the first quarter of this year by 6.8%. Without Apple, it would have decreased 2.9%. So you can just as well buy Apple and be invested in the US market. This is the first problem. The second problem is that you don't really need all these shares. You don't need 500 shares when you're an investor. If you want to have diversification benefits, which lowers your risks, you know, which the risk is high if you just have two stocks, you only need about 20 to 30 shares and you have the full benefits of diversifications. And last but not least, even though index investing is quite cheap, you still pay a lot in fees. If I invest for the next 30 years, I'm now 46 years old, and by the time I hit 65, I probably have to work for another 10 years because the retirement age is 75. So if I look at the next 30 years and invest 20,000 francs each year into, into assets for my retirement, I'm gonna have spent also quite a bit on fees. Now this looks small to how much I make, but this little piece here is actually 125,000 francs that I've spent, and this is actually a nice little car that I could afford when I start my retirement. So you make your own decision. It's either the car in front of your garage or it's the car in front of your asset manager. <laughs> and that's why I think the better idea <laughs> to your retirement savings is you build your own index like your grandma did. It's really an old, an old and established way of saving money is you pick stocks and you keep them for a long time. Now, I thought I should do that now. It was not only because I thought I'm too much exposed to the apples of this world, it was also that I thought there are certain companies that I really don't like. You know, they may pollute the environment, they may be unfair to minorities, whatever. I mean, they may have a bad governance. Uh, I don't want to be invested in these companies, but I knew I am because I bought an index. So I said, let's start and try to find the companies I want to invest in. And I had a real difficult time. I went to Google Finance first because it's the most established par uh, portal. I looked there for stocks to invest in. I went to Swissquote, which is my provider that I use personally. I tried to find stocks there. And it turns out it's really hard to find stocks online. It's very difficult. You have tools, but they're intimidating, they're complicated when you, when you look at it, such a portal typically. Um, you know it's gonna take hours and hours until you understand it. Most people will not do that effort. Not even I have done it. I'm still invested in index funds, by the way. 
So until our system is uh, fully operational. So we decided what do we need in order to identify stocks that we want to invest in. And we used, uh, we uh, turned, the, we turned the, the most common investment strategy, like a value strategy, like a growth strategy, like a momentum strategy. If you're in asset management, you know these are typical strategies that people use to pick stocks. We turned them into a search engine, a stock search engine. And we applied this stock search engine on 10,000 stocks worldwide, 45 countries. And uh, now we have a system which is online, you can use that from our website, where you can actually go to our website, select a country, and you get the stocks on top that best match the strategies that you like. And we did some backtesting. What you see here are all the countries that we tested, uh, 45 countries and regions. And we looked at the last three years, and we always measured, you know, when are we with our search, stock search engine, better than the market. In all green areas, we've beaten the index of the local market, and in all the red areas, we have not beaten it. Altogether, we have measured 135 investment years, and nowhere two-thirds of all cases, uh, our stock search engine provides results, results which are above average. The total outperformance across these 135 investment years is 10.5%. Now you would think, problem solved. You know, we have an engine that gives us the stocks, we can pick them and we can invest ourselves. But the problem is, people don't think that way. I would say nobody in this room will go home to our website, even though it's for free, get the tips from our website and invest. Why is that the case? We asked the research firm in the US um, to find how investors actually make their investment decisions. And the amazing thing is, it was a huge research report, only two things are important that you see up here. There are 32 million Americans in the US that actually pick their own stocks. But this is, these are the good news, it's a big market. They would say you get lots of hits. But these 32 million investors, almost all of them pick their stock based on other people's opinion. They go to the webs, they go to websites, to blogs, they go to you know, TVs, they, they watch TV shows, they, they, list, they read the newspaper, they wanna know what other people think and then they do the same. They're never gonna go to a website that tells them what actually the right stock would be based on a search algorithm. They don't like that. And psychologists have a, have a good reason for that. The uh, psychologist Daniel Kahneman, uh, a famous um, uh, Nobel laureate who wrote a book I can really recommend, Thinking Fast and Slow, he said, we humans tend to first think in stories and associations. If we like a story, then we're gonna follow through. Only if we don't like the story, we start to think. <laughs> As long as you have a good story, if somebody tells you, I just had an interesting conversation uh, over lunch, you know, and he, uh, you know, I was asked uh, what, what we think about the world economy, and I said, yeah, it's gonna go down because you know what? China's real estate bubble is gonna destroy the luxury goods um, industry first in the next couple of years, and then it's gonna probably lower commodity prices, so we're gonna have a recession. It's a really good story. And when the story is good, you don't start to think, you invest actually, that's the reality. And what have we done now when we realize we need stories? Because our engine is never gonna produce any stories and as a matter of fact, the entire competition that is trying to provide automated stock advice has the problem that people will not believe them. So what we, we're saying, what we're doing now is we're starting to create stories. And I have here the first, um, the first um, example of stories that we have created based on our uh, search engine. It's um, a magazine that's going to be published on Wednesday in the Finanz und Wirtschaft, and it's about the CEOs of the year in Switzerland. And it's a really nice magazine. I just got it yesterday night, fresh, fresh off the press, so new that the glue is not, not really dry yet. And what you see is all the, Swiss, all the Swiss CEOs that have performed really well, that have performed really well based on our algorithm. And they loved it. The CEOs loved it, it's unbelievable. And they actually placed advertisements in the magazine so that they didn't even have to pay for it. <laughs> it's important because marketing is expensive. Now we have the stories of the CEOs, which is the first 
and most important um, place where you go to make an investment decision. You always want to know what the people are behind the company. And, and, and we can start to use these stories to help people make better decisions. So when they come to our website, they will start to see the CEO stories. And now, I think that's going to help them, that's going to help our investors have more trust in the numbers they see. And now, I have a question for you, because for us, we have now a couple of next steps. Um, we need more stories. It's not just enough to have a couple of CEOs every year. It doesn't, it's not enough. Uh, so we decided to look for ways to create more stories so that people build up confidence in the data that they're getting from us. And I have three new areas where we are going to focus now, where we are focusing right now, where we're developing more stories. The first one is the, technical, the, the marketing people call it search engine optimization, which means our results are going to be presented in stories, like this country with this investment strategy made this performance. And Google can search it, and because people then come to our website and interact with the information, we're going to have get a higher ranking. So the first strategy that we have is search engine optimization. The second strategy that we have is social networking. We want people to enable to tell stories to each other about the stocks that they find. So that we can also use people's own opinion about stocks and turn them into stories. That's now possible with Facebook. They have so something called a social graph, which lets you put together entire stories based on facts. And the third one is an in stock investing game. And the idea of the game is you learn to play with the results of our search engine, stock search engine, and you realize that you have actually on average a 10.5% outperformance. And the idea with the stock game is that you build up confidence in your own stock picking and don't have to rely on somebody else's opinion. Now my question to you is, where should I put my research, not my research, my, my, yeah, my research, my research budget? Should it be in the number one, search engine optimization? Should I focus on social networking? Or should I develop a stock investing game? I'm going to do all of them, but I would like to know from this audience, because you're people that actually need to do your own indexing, what you think is the most attractive place to get trust? Social networking? Investing the investing game? Let's make a, let's vote first. Let's vote. Who, who thinks uh, social networking? Let's start there. So that's seven, eight. Yeah, then who thinks uh, uh, search engine optimization? That's 12, eight to 12. And who thinks the stock investing game? Oh, that's the majority. <laughs> Very happy because I think that's where I'm going to focus my, <laughs> where I'm going to focus my most. I think I expect the most, but I have to do the other ones too. Uh, the biggest, the biggest issue I have here in social networking is, is, is do people really want to do anything proactively? That's, but if you have an idea, you know that's um, probably uh, you can probably come to me and tell me what how you would do it. You know because we are developing, developing now this case. 